1968, a 3M scientist developed a reusable adhesive that didn't really stick. The glue he created could hold paper together, but wasn't strong enough to maintain the bond when pulled on. Unfortunately, the scientist was trying to make a super glue. It would take 12 years and a flash of eureka to turn the glue that wouldn't stick into the post-it note. Spencer Silver had a PhD in organic chemistry when he came to 3M to work as a senior chemist in their central research lab. While trying to improve the adhesive that 3M used for tape, Silver discovered a less sticky glue. Ordinary adhesives are flat, with a solid contact area for adhesion. It is this unbroken contact that makes glue so sticky. What Silver found was a glue that, while quite sticky, could only be formed into individual spheres the thickness of a piece of paper. The spheres would only adhere to things tangentially, thus the adhesive's total contact area was very small. The result was a tacky, reusable glue that held paper together well. Silver knew he was onto something, but wasn't sure how to market it. Early ideas included a sticky bulletin board for temporary messages, or as a low-powered spray adhesive. It's purely an accident. The guy was looking for something that uh, a stronger adhesive and came up with an extremely weak adhesive, and he didn't know what to do with it until eventually they started making these bulletin boards and so on. Silver kept plugging away at the possibilities of this new glue, presenting it individually and during seminars. In attendance at one of these seminars was a 3M scientist named Arthur Fry. Fry sang in his church choir, and to keep track of the hymns, he tore scraps of paper into strips to make bookmarks. Every Sunday, a few would fall out of the hymnal, frustrating Fry. In a moment of divine inspiration, Fry realized that Silver's glue might make the perfect temporary adhesive to hold bookmarks. At work, Fry gathered scraps of paper and Silver's glue and combined them to make sticky but removable bookmarks. The bookmarks were popular and handy, but people did need more than a few of them. Shortly thereafter, Fry sent a file to a colleague using one of these bookmarks with an arrow on it to indicate a point of interest. The report came back with the bookmark still attached and the colleague had used the bookmark as a note. Fry quickly realized that his bookmark had applications as an adhesive note. Fry believed so strongly in his invention that when engineers told him that a machine didn't exist to manufacture the notes, he went home and built just such a machine in his basement. When he couldn't fit it through his basement door, he knocked the wall down. Now he had his manufacturing equipment and a great product. The only thing he didn't have was the support of senior management at 3M. To overcome this, Fry sent samples to all the company's executives who quickly ordered more samples. Management was quickly hooked and their demands soon outstripped development's production capacity. When it became clear that post-it notes were viable in a commercial atmosphere, 3M's marketing went to work. In 1978, a team of 3M marketers flooded Boise, Idaho, showing everyone they could find the wondrous new notes. Many times uh, in your mailbox you'll get a little sample of uh, shampoo or deodorant or something, and that, all that it is is, is uh, an example of the Boise Blitz, except applied to uh, something much simpler. Post-it notes were officially released to the public in 1980, and in 1981 they were named 3M's outstanding new product. Well, I think the most important idea here is that if you have clever people and you let them do what they're good at, something good is likely to happen. Today, there are over 600 products based on the posted concept. Arthur Fry is semi-retired from 3M, maintaining a part-time presence as a mentor. Spencer Silver retired in 1996.